Howdy folks, your old buddy here, Kilo Alpha Zero, Charlie Lima Golf, back again. Uh, we're going to do kind of an extensive video here. It's going to be uh, regarding uh, the ICOM IC7300 and the software I've ran through in the past couple of videos. FL Digi, FL Rig, WSJT-X. Got it that time. Um, having problems. Um, they were both installed on the same computer uh, under the same profile and was having issues, I think, I'm not sure, with one of them taking over one of the COM ports or in Linux, that's a DEV port, DEV slash whatever. Anyhow, um, I have an idea of how I can separate all that. It's probably a goofy idea, but I'm going to try it because, you know, it's experimentation. So let's go ahead. We're going to just reload everything and this time we're going to detail as... Uh, as much as I can so you can uh, if you're having trouble and you've got a, a setup similar to mine hopefully I can help you out and help me out at the same time so let's go ahead and get started and let's go ahead and uh, make it a good one there he is old lazy bones what's going on kitty okay so when you're talking digital modes all that jazz and your HF equipment, everything starts with software, in my opinion. So let's take a look. We're gonna start here. So here's the Raspberry Pi 400, and this is where the software goes. There's a port in the back, right there, right there. So what I did is I have two of these, a little, a little scan disk basically. So it's a little tiny. Can't focus in. 32 gigabyte scan disk. And I have two of them. One, two. Here's the kind I buy. These are pretty good. Uh, they're like 15 bucks. And I'm buying two because I'm going to have two separate builds of Raspberry operating system. Uh, to use one will be for for FL Digi and FL Rig. This will be for WSTJX. So that's how we're gonna separate this out. So let's just take, do a quick look on how to load software on these, and we'll move on to the next thing. So to format one of those little mini SD cards, you do need a uh, uh, you know, either an SD card reader or, you know, when you used to, it's a flash drive, you'd shove it in the computer. This doesn't have any of that. So I pre-installed those already. But if you had the flash card reader um, to plug in your computer and load the software, this is how you would do it. Go to raspberrypi.com software. And I'm going to go right here to download for Windows. Click it. And it's going to download an executable file, and you double, well, you click that, you know, double click it, click it, whatever. And it's going to come up. There it is. Yes, install it. And install the software. Let it go. And finish. And it's going to come up with a load so what you're going to do is choose your OS and I chose this first selection come on nope wrong 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 never mind I went to other wrong this is a 64-bit oh look at that so 64-bit um, this will work with the Pi 400. This the Pi 400 is a 64-bit processor, and it's a 1.8 gig uh, speed on that. So basically, you would select that. You would have your your scan disk, whatever, in the computer, and you would go choose storage. Click that. It's going to come up with a, with, an, with another menu that will default to that. Click it, and then write, and then go through the install. Um, so we've already done that. I could show you this later, but this is pretty easy. You can figure this out if you just play around a little bit. So let's go and see if these loads work. Okay, so here we've got 
one of these in there. Let's go ahead and shove that in there. there it's in there. Whoop. Okay. Let's plug in the power. Green light is on. And up comes the screen. This is where I find out if I loaded the right OS for this particular computer. I believe I did. Oh yeah, it's going. So it's a booting up. Come on, come on, come on. Please work. I think I did it right. Like who wants to sit here and watch this go on? Dude, pause your camera. Let it load. Come back later. Okay. And whammo, it worked. So we're going to hit next. Go through some of these screens, but not all of them. So here you select the United States, where you're at, um, English, all that. So we're going to select all that. I'm going to get to probably a dialog box, and I'm going to name it a certain name so that I can know what's what. But uh, So that worked. That option worked. Uh, the download install was the right one for the Pi 400, and we're good. Okay, I think we're good. Let's zoom back a little bit. There we go. And let's just change this desktop to something else. So we're going to change the background of this to be, let's do Aurora up here. And let's go down here to open and okay. So this will be the FL Digi um, profile. I think you can do multiple profiles here, but yeah, uh, the problem, like I said before, was that the the ports, the DEV, the DEV ports, got confused and copied and messed up by those two softwares. So we're going to keep this completely separate. So that first build is done. Okay, let's do the second build. This is going to be the the uh, just the custom setup for WSTJX. Come on, come on, come on. There it is, same thing. Another 32 bit little tiny SD card. I'm gonna put that in here. Get it in there. Come on, come on, come on. Shove it in there. Okay. And let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Okay. We've got the green light. I do believe, I do believe, I do believe this is going to load as well. And the second load is a success. And this is some of the parameters. United States, English, English language, all that basic stuff. Next. And we'll get this one set up. And we're good there, so let's go ahead and change this desktop picture. It's just, it's probably not necessary, but I just think it's cool. So we had Aurora for the, what's going to be the FL Digi setup for the WSJT. Ah, let's try, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm, which one, which one, which one? Lasers! That's gonna suck. But it's just an example. Oh, yeah! That's WSJT all the way! Okay, we're all set up now. And we now have two separate loads of Raspberry Pi uh, one for FL Digi, one for WSJ, WST, whatever it is. The other one. And uh, so now the next step is going to be to set the rig back up, reload the um, the firmware update, and clean this back to clean this whole system up back to um, a fresh build. So the ICOM IC7300 has its little SD card down here. Let's bang it out. And these are the biggies. Um, you don't need to use these, but uh, I'm gonna get in here. It's a 32 gig, you know, 
big size. You can use these uh, these small ones with, with these adapters, but I bought this one for the rig, so that's what we're going to use. So I already have the firmware, the 1.41 firmware on here, and I'm going to go ahead and just reload all that. So shove that in there. Okay, there it is. And the firmware load is menu set. And you want to go ahead and arrow down to SD card, firmware update. Yes, yes, whatever. And I'm going to just do this one. And so that's the 1.41. You hold this down. And that resets it. And voila. So that's the preliminary setup. The software for the computer. Um, setting the ICOM IC7300 to the 1.41 update. Firmware update 1.41 version 1.41. And any changes I made, just wipe that all out and start all over again. That's what I'm doing here. <clears throat> so now we've got the foundation set up. Next thing to do is to be is to install the software. That'll be in the next video coming soon. Yeah, sure it is. Yep.